Hi, this is Andrew Klein. Today's video is going to cover the basics of UVing. We're going to look at how to UV this simple creation based on designs uh, made from uh, paper craft. Uh, this is really just a collection of simple cubes and a very simple texture. And so we're going to look at how to lay out UVs to match up with an already created texture. Now in this completed version, uh, let me go to Window, UV Texture Editor, and you can see that all of my parts have UVs that have already been established. If I go in this UV Texture Editor window to Image, Display Image, you can see how they fit onto the already existing texture. Now let me go ahead and open up my blank scene file by going to File, Open Scene, and I'm going to choose my blank version. This version does not have any UVs for this object, and this is where we are going to start. If you're trying to load in a texture, you have to go to set a project directory first. That way you can link where your scene is relative to your texture. To do this, I'm going to go to File, Set Project, and choose that folder. Once it's chosen, I can select my object and go to, in the Attribute Editor, the Material tab, which in this case I have named Kleinemon Material. If you're just starting out, you might see something such as Lambert 1 in this tab. Now I have already hooked up a texture here, that is in the Color section. Uh, to hook up a texture, you can click on the little grid icon or checker icon and then choose File to bring in an external source. That's what I've already done here for the color channel. And so you see what I describe as a little asteroid spaceship flying through a stargate. I click on that and that takes me to my texture itself. Now here under image name is where your texture is located. If I click on the folder, I can see that texture. Or if I want, I can load my own new texture. This texture is courtesy of a former student of mine, Robert Hashman. I'll hit cancel there to make sure my current texture is loaded. Now, since my texture is loaded, the reason why I can't see it on my object is there's no way to interpolate the texture to the object. If I have UVs established, then I have a way to create that relationship. But that process has not yet been done, and that's what we're going to look at here today. I'm going to start off with the head, and I think a really easy way of viewing this, so we don't have to worry about the other objects, is I'm going to select my head and go to Show. Isolate Select, View Selected. I can also just choose this dotted green wireframe that's up here on the viewport bar that says Isolate Select. That doesn't delete the other objects, it just temporarily hides them. I'm also going to go to Window, UV Texture Editor. That's going to open up the window which I can use to see how I'm laying out my UVs onto the surface. When I select off my surface, you'll see there's no texture present. And when I select the surface, you'll see a texture in the background. I'm temporarily going to turn off this texture. We're going to use it later to align our UVs. And I'll do this by clicking on the blue haired face icon called Display Image on Off. You can also find this under Image, Display Image. So my first step here now is to create some uh, initial UVs for this piece. To do that, I'm going to go in my Polygons menu set to Create UVs. I'm going to choose the Options box for Planar Mapping. Now we're going to look at several ways to do mapping for each of the parts of this body. But um, I'm going to start off with a planar map of a whole object. So my object is selected. It's got a green wireframe. That's how you know it's in object mode. I'll choose these options. Let me just reset my settings. The default will fit the projection to the bounding box. That's what we want. However, project from is currently set to the x-axis. The x-axis, based on what I see in my compass in the lower left corner, is me looking at the head from the side. There's no reason why I can't start that way, but to me it makes more sense to look at it from the face to begin with. And if I show my isolate select, this is the head, the face of the character. So I want to start looking at that front axis. That is the z-axis. Now if I choose Apply here, as is, you'll see that my texture in the background, my UVs, uh, my UVs have been mapped to the 0 to 1 space completely. Now my face 
is not a square, but my UVs have been mapped as a square. And because the arrangement in UV space does not match the arrangement in 3D space, I've actually caused distortion onto the model, where you can see my texture has been noticeably squashed. I'm just going to control Z twice, and I'm going to go back into these mapping options. I'm just going to turn on now keep image width height ratio and project again. Now you'll notice that my UV arrangement is at the same proportion as the front of the face. However, the sides and all the other parts now have problems. Specifically, the back here has a really interesting problem where my texture is appearing inside out. This is because my UVs are stacked. Essentially, this front face is stacked right on top of this back face, and the texture is being projected through the model. This top face is represented entirely by a thin line along the upper edge of the surface. My job is going to be to cut these shells apart into separate pieces. That way I can represent each of the faces of the model uniquely, and then I can sew them back together to create this cross shape arrangement. Finally, I'm going to pack them into the 0 to 1 space to make sure that my UVs overlap exactly with the texture that's already been created. The first step in doing this is selecting appropriate edges to cut. Now I'm going to use the texture sample that you see here to cut this. If you're not working with an already existing texture, you can cut whatever you want. If this is the overall face of my surface and we're looking at the little textural representation right here, you can notice that the edge that is along the top of the face, the sides and the bottom, they all remain sewn together at the end. They all remain stitched up. However, the edge above each ear, the edge above the back of the head, and the edges along the bottom all need to be cut. Additionally, I'm going to cut the edge behind the character's left ear. That's going to create cuts in the proper places where I can eventually unfold this out. Doesn't make sense yet? Watch me do it. I'm just going to hit 5 in the viewport to hide my texture. Remember 6 is textured mode, 5 is smooth shaded. You can also toggle this in the viewport bar by clicking on wireframe, smooth shaded, or textured, or under shading wireframe, smooth shade all, or your textured view. I'm just going to go back to smooth shaded. I'm going to hold down right click and enter the edge component mode. I'm going to select multiple edges by holding down shift. I'll hold down shift and select three edges along the bottom. Notice how I'm not selecting the edges underneath the chin or on top of the forehead. I'm just selecting these U-shaped regions along the top and along the bottom. Then behind the character's left ear, I'm going to hold down shift and select one more edge. All told, there's seven edges that I have selected here. In my UV space, you can see how these have been selected. Now I need to separate this out, so I need to cut these edges physically. In the UV Texture Editor, there's an icon that looks like a pair of scissors. You can see my cursor hovering over right here. Clicking that icon, or going into Polygons, Cut UV Edges, will do the same thing. It will actually cut open my UV edges. You're not going to see anything happen in either the viewport or the UV Texture Editor yet. But if you want to, you can go to Object Mode, select your object, go to Display, polygons, and choose texture border edges. Doing this is going to make the object's edges that you have cut become twice as thick as object's edges that you have not yet cut. This can sometimes be very helpful for seeing which edges you've already cut apart. What we're going to do in the next video is we're going to take a look at how to unfold this shell using a couple of unfold tools. This has been video one. Uh, stay tuned for video two. Thank you very much.